With COVID still looming and lockdown orders in place, there are none of the usual scheduled activities that most parents are used to having access to over the winter months. And we are probably all starting to get a bit of cabin fever. So if you have been struggling with trying to get outside with your kids, then this is probably the video for you. In this video, I'm going to be covering 13 different activities that you can do in the city with your kids that do not require any snow because this has not been the best winter when it comes to snow weather and in another video I'm going to cover 13 activities you can do that have snow which I will leave linked down below when it goes live so let's dive into it I'm Christine and on buying time we cover gardening in southern Ontario and nature inspired activities designed to get the entire family outdoors so we have no snow what are we supposed to do with ourselves in the city well, number one we can go out and we can feed birds. We are really lucky in the city to have a really diverse array of birds available to us and many of them we can feed. So there are chickadees that will eat directly out of your hand. There are also some very greedy ducks, geese. There's a number of birds that we can go about feeding them but we don't want to be feeding them bread. Our go-to is just basic black sunflower seeds. We get a giant bag of them and then we use that to fill our bird feeders. And we also keep a container in the car so that if we come across any birds, we can grab them and whip them out. Now is a great time to begin looking into winter sowing seeds. And this is a really great activity that you can do with kids. It may feel a bit futile to be planning for gardening and you may be eager to get a start on seed sowing, but we can do winter sowing now. And that way we don't have to worry about keeping anything alive live indoors when we already have enough on our hands but if we pop it into a container and pop it outside in the yard nature is going to take it from there and it is a great activity to keep little hands occupied for a good chunk of time. We can make frozen globes in little orb shapes, otherwise you can do sun catchers or even bird feeder styles. You can do a little bit of hunting around your property to find things that you can add into it. So you can do little evergreen snips or little twigs, leaves, berries. Um, if you have bird seed on hand, you can add that as well and you can put it into a container of some sort. You can use baking tins and add some water, freeze it, if it's cold enough outside, you can just leave it outside to freeze it this winter. You're probably gonna to need to make use of your freezer space. And then you can string that up outside and you can put that by a window and you can watch the sun's light catch and shine through the, the ice illuminating the items you've put inside. Otherwise, you can place it in a tree and it can be a natural bird feeder that way. We can go flower hunting. It may seem a little unorthodox to be looking for flowers this time of year, but if you go over to botanical gardens right now, or if you know of a neighbor that may have them, hellebores already have their flower buds out and some have already opened and are in bloom. I will leave a video linked below where you can find hellebores at the Toronto Botanical Gardens. They really begin to shine in March, but you can find those flowers even now in their space. So that will be linked below. We can take advantage of the shorter days and we can do some sunrise and sunset watching with our kids. There are some really amazing lookout spots in the city. If you need some inspiration on where to go, let me know in the comments and I can help point you to some spots but you can pack up a blanket, bundle up tight, put some hot chocolate into a thermos and head out to catch the sunrise or the sunset and have a special little moment with your family. Now that there are no leaves on the trees, now is a really great time to look for nests and to really begin to explore the different types of nests, whether it is a squirrel's nest or a bird of prey or a smaller bird and see if maybe you can identify what animal or what bird was it that made that nest. Now is a great time to go looking for beaver dams. The beavers have been so busy throughout the city this year and there have been beaver dams popping up all over. We have found quite a few on our adventures so far. If you are not familiar on where you should be looking for beaver dams, let me know in the comments and I will help to point you to some spots. In the summertime we can do a lot of plant ID through the leaves and in the winter you may be thinking it's impossible to tell plants apart but that is not the case. We can do some tree and shrub ID from the bud forms and there are some really interesting plants that have really fascinating buds but also from the seeds and winter interest that they may have and also bark. We can also spend the time to make some natural bird feeders or garlands and decorate the trees on our property or if we do not have access to our property these make great gifts for family members that we may not be able to spend time with right now and every time they look out their window they'll be able to see that little something special 
help from you and your family. Now there is lots of information online for how to make bird feeders, but if you would like a little more information on that from me, once again, drop a note below and I will give you a few basic tips. Winter is one of my favorite times to go hiking. There is something so special about hiking in the winter. One, the lookouts, you can see so much further than you would ever be able to see. The ground is often solid, although slick. So making sure that you have proper secured footing is critical. But waterfalls, waterfalls are one of the best parts about hiking in Southern Ontario. And in the winter, they are absolutely spectacular. Further to getting out earlier or later in the day and taking advantage of the shorter days, you can play flashlight tag with your kids in either your backyard or the local park. If your kids are perhaps a little bit older and can really begin to take instruction and some leadership, you can even try geocaching with them is you can make mandalas out of all sorts of found materials. This can be rocks, leaves, twigs. There is no right or wrong way to make one of these but it can be a really fun, creative outlet for your kids. So let me know, what are your favorite no snow activities and what are your go-to activities for kids? Because I definitely have not tried them all and I would love to try them out with my own little ones. So drop me a note down below so that we can add them to our to-do list this winter. 